One early morning, Gordon awoke with a start. He felt strange, but could not explain why. His driver, who was steaming him up, reassured him. It's a ditch water, Gordon, he said. It can get in your mechanical workings and make you feel sick. Gordon was satisfied, but what was odd was that he couldn't remember falling into the ditch, even though it had recently happened. The memory was fuzzy at best. I'm just exhausted from pulling the express so well, he chuckled to himself, and fell back into an uneasy sleep. Later that morning, Gordon sleepily poured his train into the junction. Thomas, who looked equally as tired, greeted him. Long night? Thomas asked. Yes, I had some very strange dreams, Gordon replied. Me too. It was like we were back at the mine again. But then, when I awoke, I couldn't actually remember being there at all. I had the same dreams. Come to think of it, I can't remember falling into the ditch, much less rescuing you from the mine. What does it mean? Thomas asked. I don't know. We only just came back. I remember bringing you to the yard, just before the queen came to the island. I remember that too. But why can't we remember actually being at the mine? The two engines decided to find out for themselves. That night, the two engines puffed to the old lab mines. They rode into the band that led to the mines. But they were met with cautionary signs that read, Danger, collapsed the mine ahead. We'll have to investigate from here, said the crews. They walked past the signs and towards the collapsed mine shafts. They came back a short while later. What are you doing back here so soon? Thomas asked. Nothing to see, let's head back. Thomas and Gordon didn't believe them. You didn't even take a light with you. How could you have seen anything? The crews insisted, but Thomas resisted. He sped through the cautionary signs. And stopped at the edge of a large gaping pit. When he looked down, he shrieked. G -g -g Gordon, Thomas called. In the pit were two mangled engines. One looked exactly like Gordon and the other exactly like Thomas. Who, who are these engines? Gordon asked. A terrible feeling began stewing deep in his boiler. I can explain, said a familiar voice. The fat controller stood next to his car. I had hoped this day would never come. But alas, here we are. These were you, he said solemnly. What do you mean, were? Asked Thomas, the stress in his voice. When you fell into the mine, Thomas, you didn't just fall. The mine collapsed beneath you, swallowing you whole. We tried bringing Gordon, our strongest engine, to lift you out with a pulley system. But we misjudged how hollow the shaft was below, and he too fell into the growing chasm beneath the ground. But how can we be here, if we're down there? Gordon asked. It's a gruesome tale, said the fat controller. We had a major scandal due to our lack of judgement. And to save face, we saved your faces. There was a talented engineer from crew who moved your identities into new shells. The engines you see below, the former cells, were prototypes. Thomas and Gordon didn't know what to say. In that confusion, they began to cry. That doesn't change who you are now, the fact controller said. You're still two of my most useful engines. We gave you a second chance and avoided a scandal. We understand, Thomas said. Soon after, the two engines slung home, buffed the buff. Everything felt familiar and foreign at the same time. It didn't feel whole anymore knowing that a part of them was rotting away in the bowels of the mines. They only hoped that one day, many years from now, these memories would become fuzzy too. <laughs>